I'm ready to make my second segmented bowl, this time out of walnut and maple. I finally solved the problem of getting the CNC segments to stick down to the waste board. I should have thought of it sooner, but join me and find out how I did it. I want to make this segmented bowl walnut and maple. Good contrasting colors. So it's off to Frank Paxton Lumberyard. I've been going here since the 80s. They have an amazing selection of hardwood lumber. This is always a fun trip. Okay, so let's look at how we're going to design this bowl. The horizontal pencil lines are essentially each board three quarters of an inch thick stacked up. The cold jaws on my chuck will take a 10 inch diameter part. So I want to start with a 5 inch radius. Then I sketch the actual outside of the bowl freehand. Then I freehand sketch the inside of the bowl. I'm looking at 3 eighths of an inch thick this time. Then I sketch another radius about a quarter inch inside of that for the extra meat that I'm going to trim out. Now I can start drawing in where the boards will be. I make a mark where the outside radius crosses the top of each board. Then draw the line down, which shows where the board will be. On the inside radius, I make the marks, and then I draw the line up to define the segments. Pretty simple once you see it. Now I quickly sketch each segment. And now I can measure the inside radius and outside radius of each segment. No more math. Now I'll shade in where the bowl is, just so I can see what the final bowl will look like inside the segments. Now that I know the inside and outside radius of each segment, I can go into the CAD system and sketch them up. The only choice is the angle. I'm going with 12 segments or 30 degree segments. I've got my walnut board, and I'm using two scraps of hard maple from a previous project where I was building a dining room table. I export my segments from my CAD system and bring them into the CAM system. Then work really hard to get as many segments onto each board as possible. The little circles you see are 3 8 inch diameter. I'm using a quarter inch cutter, so I do a 3 8 circle just to give myself a little extra room between the segments. If the 3 8 circle fits, then two passes of a quarter inch cutter will be just fine. It's hard to get much closer than that. This wide board is the walnut. Using the 3 8 diameter circles, you can see how close I get the parts together. And then when I run the simulation, you can see there's hardly any material left in between the segments. I'm using a quarter inch carbide down cut cutter. I chose down cut so that it would push the segments down onto the waste board instead of an up cut which would pull them up and they wouldn't stick as well. These feeds and speeds are the standards for hardwood. More about that later. Now it's time to cut the boards, joint one edge, and make sure we have a square end. Then we'll plane them to thickness. All boards should be the exact same thickness. I pulled out of one of my storage containers a 10 year old double faced wood turners tape. I had some problems last time with the blue tape and CA glue method because I didn't get it consistent enough, so I thought I would try double face tape this time. I used the buckets for weight just to let it set for a while. It is very important to get the board square so that when I cut the high density parts, I go clear to the edge, so the board has to be square or I'll be cutting parts out in the air. Here is the walnut board. It's cutting great. You can see I've got high density parts and very little room in between, and everything is sticking well to the baseboard. Now let's move on to this extremely hard maple. You can hear the router groan as it's very hard to cut. Several pieces let go on this board. If you look, the tape didn't stick to the baseboard or the waste board. So I don't think my tape was very good, or at least it was very old. But to be honest, this is getting a little frustrating. There has to be a better solution. Here's a great thing about the Onefinity Elite Series with the Masso Control. If you hit the stop button mid-cut, when you hit start, it starts up again in the same place. Even if you lift the Z-spindle up. Really like that feature. My second maple board was actually moving. So I stopped the cut. 
I then re-taped it down and tried again. Uh-oh, more problems. I need to rethink. As I said, I was getting frustrated. I thought, well, maple's too hard, so let me get out some poplar. But I didn't have a poplar board. The walnut cut much better than the maple, and then it occurred to me, I'm pushing the router too hard. I'm putting too much force on the wood. The maple is so hard that it's much higher forces than the walnut. So let's look at our feeds and speeds that are in the Carveco software for hardwoods. We can see it's 145 inches a minute. While that works, and it's optimum for most hardwoods, this maple is extremely hard. So I made a choice. I was going to decrease my feed rate from 145 inches a minute down to 100. That would be much easier on the tape. I was also going to change my plunge rate from 48 to 24, just because. I thought this made good sense. Let's see how it works. So my 10-year-old double-faced tape didn't work, so we're back to blue tape. And CA glue, because I was too cheap or frugal to wait. So here we go. Let's see what happens. Right from the start, you can hear it's quieter. The router is still getting pushed through the material, but not at too high a speed. Something else you can see, I set it up on the right side of my machine where the board doesn't go over the T-track, so there'll be no weak spots in the tape support. This is looking pretty good. We are gonna make it without any pops. Things were looking good. I started worried I'd break the router bit. You just never know what's going to happen, but it didn't. So I actually learned something today. Not all hardwoods are the same. We knew it, but the CNC thinks they are. Sometimes we have to think for our machines. Wanted to sand the end of the segments, so I used my belt sander, but I didn't turn it on because that would have been too much. Now it's time for the glue up. This is always fun. I use band clamps to keep things tight. I use a soft face mallet to keep everything as flat as possible. I want the glue up to be perfect, at least as perfect as I can get it. I like the walnut and the maple colors. This is going to look good. I decided to sand the rings flat on my lathe. Just seemed easier to let the lathe do the work instead of my arms. The cold jaws are nice. I could get all the rings done by adjusting the large Titan chuck. I was happy with this technique. And using the dust collection always helps. It's time for the glue up, but first I have to mark the center of each segment so I can offset and get a brick laid look on all the segments. Next, I like to mark the diameter of where each ring goes so when I glue it up I have a reference and don't have to worry about it. And now the glue up. I only wish I worked this fast. This time I thought about how I was going to clamp it. Got a little coffee can and some spacers, so I had room for my clamps. This is much better than what I did on my first bowl. One more glue up, and then we can turn tomorrow. Now we sharpen our tools quickly. And then we chuck up our segmented bowl. Now we can start turning. Quickly smooth the outside, and then start working on the foot. Segmented bowls from kiln-dried lumber turn much differently than logs. This foot looks way too thick. I'm going to make it smaller, so I'm going to cut it off and then do it again. That's better. It gives the bowl a better balance. Now let's sand the outside. Now that we turned it around, we can do the top ring and then start on the inside. Oh crap, kaboom! I had a catch, and it tore the bowl off the chuck. Now what am I going to do? I wasn't sure when I did it, but I cut a foot out of walnut and another one out of maple, so I have an extra foot. So I'm going to cut this broken one off to make sure it's flat for the glue surface and centered. Now we glue it up and wait for tomorrow. I have a deja vu feeling as I'm starting to turn this foot again. I sped the video up 
This next one minute took an hour and a half. I also changed the foot design. I'm doing it so the chuck is compressing on the foot instead of expanding. I've had much better luck with this. After getting my last bowl too thin and this bowl breaking, I wanted to be very careful. Let's turn it around and get back to work on the inside. I tried to work from the outside edge to the bottom, only machining the top ring or two so I didn't get the chatter that I got the last time. I left the bowl thicker, and you can see me checking for the thickness consistency multiple times. This is a beautiful bowl. I don't want to screw it up. More sanding. You always have to pay the piper. I thought I would try this Yorkshire Grit Wood Turner's Abrasive Paste made by Easy Wood Tools. I've never used it, but I bought some a while ago, and I thought I'd try it. I spread it and rubbed it in with the lathe off, and then turned the lathe on, and it acts like a friction polish. Gotta do both sides. For the finish, I wanted to use a wax, PPP made by Hut. It's a friction polish again. PPP actually stands for Perfect Pen Polish, but I wanted to use it because it's a high quality wax. I am liking the way this is looking. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and ring the bell. I appreciate you watching the Johnsonville Woodworker.